DiscerningHearts.com presents Inside the Pages, insights from today's most compelling authors. I'm your host, Chris McGregor, and I am delighted to be joined by Father Thomas Berg, who is a priest of the Archdiocese of New York. He is a professor of moral theology and director of seminary admissions at St. Joseph Seminary, Dunwoody, in Yonkers, New York. He's the author of Hurting in the Church, A Way Forward for Wounded Catholics. With Father Thomas Berg, we go inside the pages of Choosing Forgiveness, Unleash the Power of God's Grace, published by Our Sunday Visitor. Father Berg, thank you so much for joining me. Great to be with you. I can't tell you how enthusiastic I was to be able to have the opportunity to talk to you about Choosing Forgiveness, Unleash the Power of God's Grace. This is an absolutely phenomenal work. I I just don't even want to call it a book because it's like one of those things that contains so much grace. You just, I don't know how to express it to everybody as fully as I'd like to. Well, thank you. I mean, and thanks be to, thanks be to God. What can I say? I mean, I'm, I'm just, it, it is evident. I think that the, the book is, you know, God's using uh, the book to, to touch uh, a lot of hearts and, I mean, and this is true in every age. I mean, forgiveness is always, it's always an issue. And like I've been saying in a number of interviews and, and podcasts and whatnot that, you know, uh, that uh, Dr. Locke and I, my co-author have been doing, just because you write a book on it, by the way, d- doesn't mean it gets any easier for Dr. Locke or, my, <laughs> or myself. Um, it's Forgiveness is hard. Forgiveness is, it's it's a huge challenge, but one of the, amazing things about forgiveness is that, I mean, this is where really, you know, the rubber hits the road and and we're really all in on being disciples of Jesus. We have to go there. Forgiveness is such a fundamental expression of Christian faith and of Christian being and the way Christians are called to be. It really has to be a you could even, you know, a habit of forgiveness, it just has to become, with God's grace, just a dimension of life as challenging as it is. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, grateful that obviously the, the book is is touching a, a nerve and, and speaking to hearts, and our Lord seems to be using it. Well, what struck me right away was the understanding, at least for me in my circumstances in life, is that forgiveness is not something that it's a static moment in a relationship or in an instant. It is something that is actually, as you you so beautifully bring out in the book, it's a process. Sometimes it can be a long process, can it? We both, uh, Dr. Locke and I, point, especially to Catholics, because I think Catholics in particular can be susceptible to this sort of kind of knee-jerk, well, okay, all right, I, I I forgave her, or all right, I'm over it, you know, um, because people are telling us, oh, come on, you got to get over it. There is such a thing as getting over the, you know, the minor irritations of life, you know, the guy who cuts in front of me on traffic. I can forgive those things pr- pr- fairly easily. I should be able to with a little virtue, but bigger hurts. We just have to be careful and, you know, really examine you know, A, have we actually made a decision or are we, you know, to forgive or are we just kind of talking happy talk to ourselves and now, ah, okay, I'm over it, I guess, so, you know, or, or just because the bad feelings kind of simmer down, I'm assuming that therefore I've forgiven this person. So, so yeah, for, it, it really is a process and, and we present it that way so that we have to approach it as something very intentional. Forgiveness is not a feeling. So we have to kind of separate whatever this thing is, forgiveness, this decision that we make to distinguish that from feelings. Um, And then understand that it's a process and maybe even something that over time um, I have to go deeper into and I may need to renew from time to time. You bring out very fully that it's an act of your will to forgive. 
that's entering into the process. I think a great example of that, of course, is our Lord on the cross. And I say this in all reverence. He's hanging there on the cross, having been literally tortured, forgiving those who have done this. I don't mean to presume, but I doubt that he had the warm fuzzies in that moment, (laughs) you know, or even Our Lady at that, you know, juncture, you know, modeling herself on her son's example to, to forgive. It isn't going to necessarily feel good. There might be peace in this process. But you're right. It's just not about the feelings, is it? Right. Sometimes we, we get good feelings, like you, like you said, or at least a sense of peace or a feeling of relief or, you know, I mean, that, that's nice when that happens. But a lot of the people really have to understand that, especially for the, the deeper hurts in life, we can forgive and at the same time really be dealing with and having to deal with very, you know, very strong feelings for a very strong time. The other thing we point out might be getting ahead of ourselves in the, in the discussion, but sometimes very strong emotions like anger, um, even um, in authority as uh, important as uh, St. Thomas Aquinas would, you know, would point out is that anger, it can actually be a very reasonable feeling <laughs> so that forgiveness is not necessarily opposed. Sometimes people kind of stumble or they confuse and say, well, uh, it means if I, if I still feel angry at this person, then, well, I guess I haven't forgiven them. Th- those two things are not necessarily opposed. And especially, you know, as we point out in the book and, you know, sharing the stories of a couple of incredible persons who've suffered sexual abuse in, in their lives and have been able to you know, forgive their perpetrators, that is not opposed to also appropriate, feeling appropriate anger. And there's a difference between anger and hatred, right? Justifiable amount of anger can be a a very reasonable uh, thing to still feel and maybe feel for some time. It doesn't mean that we're not able to forgive that person. So the choice to forgive has to be distinguished from whatever feelings may may come before, during, or after that, yeah. I think we have to also, and you point this out at the very beginning, to forgive is not necessarily to forget. I mean, that's just not a part of our makeup, for one thing. I mean, we may have been hurt or wounded by touching a stove. It's good to remember not to touch that stove again. But in the, in the same way, some things that have occurred whether something that we've done or that has been done to us, forgiving doesn't mean I have to forgive and forget. That is absolutely correct. And somehow, I think over time, you know, Catholics, again, have been somehow kind of susceptible. Maybe it's sort of part and parcel with, uh, you know, so-called Catholic guilt that, you know, if I don't try to forgive and forget that I'm, I'm doing something wrong and I'm, I'm, I'm breaking another, I'm breaking another rule, you know? So the, the forgetting part, no, I mean, that's just, not only is that unreasonable and, and often not possible, part of the other very difficult issue, maybe more, the most difficult forgiving oneself part of, of forgiving oneself is accepting, certainly not forgetting, but actually accepting what I did or failed to do and acknowledging that as part of my story and kind of taking ownership of of that. So whether it's, you know, forgiving myself or forgiving another, there has to be this serene, and, and here's where the Holy Spirit really needs to come in and where healing especially can begin when I'm able to understand that this bad thing that happened or this bad thing that I did or failed to do, if it's with regard to myself, this is part of my story, but it's not going to define who I am. Right. And so we kind of integrate it into the narrative of the story of who we are the kind of um, fabled notion of um, forgiving and forgetting, no, that's, that just doesn't really jive with what actually happens 
in genuine forgiveness. I think rightly said there's something about the Catholic understanding of how it is to forgive. And do you think it might be tied in in a way on how we were taught about how God forgives us when our sins have been absolved? We're often told that God just forgets that, that it's like it never occurred. I have to remind myself, but I'm not God. And he didn't create me that way. Exactly. That's, that's exactly right. We are not God in that in that sense. So, no, I think it comes too from, if we look at what our Lord says to the disciples in, in any number of instances uh, about forgiving, he fully expects his disciples to forgive. And then, you know, and then, of course, with Peter, the, the 70 times 7, which is, you know, just this kind of exaggerated way of, of saying always, right? So, you know, there's the expectation, but in, in the same way that love is commanded, yet you can't command love because love has to be free, right? So it's kind of, and forgiveness as an expression of charity, our Lord fully expects us to be practicing forgiveness and to be engaging in forgiveness with his grace and with the strength that he provides but I think a number of Catholics just kind of have this, again, kind of, well, I, I'm Catholic. I, I have to forgive. That's, you know, that's, and that, this is also true of other Christian communions. I think even more so, perhaps even among evangelicals, maybe there is this kind of, if I don't forgive, then I'm doing something wrong. And this is what I do. This is quote unquote, how I was raised. I just have, to, I just have to do it. And there's not a whole lot of thought given to uh, how, how does one actually go about that? And what's the litmus test? How do I know when I've forgiven? So in that sense, unfortunately, what I think Catholics often maybe take for forgiveness is a, a superficial kind of attempt, but it, it might not go very deep and it might not actually be the real McCoy, you know, genuine forgiveness. Yeah, I think that's uh, the beauty of what you've, you've done in choosing forgiveness, unleash the power of God's grace. I'm so glad that our Sunday visitor has come forward with this book because I had never really put names to two big things. It's like one of those aha moments, you knew it, but you didn't know you knew it. And where you describe what premature forgiveness is and also the false forgiveness, that knee-jerk forgiveness that sometimes we feel compelled to do that i think that was really important father oh sure well i mean i can't take total credit for that i, I think um, my co-author dr tim lockford you know is a good has a very wonderful catholic uh therapist psychologist you know he uh, drew attention to that and we spent some time really, you know, kind of really thinking about that and how we how we could identify that but you know, this is something that he as a, a therapist, myself as a confessor, you know, you, you realize they'll tell you they're struggling to forgive and you kind of you ask them to tell you more about that. And, and it either becomes evident that they maybe tried to forgive when they weren't quite ready to do so. Or we're feeling guilty about not getting around to it or, you know, just... Um, kind of told themselves that they forgave and, you know, they just really didn't. So it was either you know, this idea that what we're calling forgiveness can be premature. Um, and I think that, you know, if, if people are just very honest with themselves, I'm, I often ask people, you know, maybe in, in like in confession, um, the issue of forgiveness comes up and where are you, you know, are you ready now? Have you been, you know, or, or if you're not, you know, just recognize that that's okay. The, the first step to forgiveness is to want to forgive, right? You know, can I at least get to that step? You know, and, and I think people just need to be more honest kind of where they're at and it's okay to say, you know, I'm just, ooh, I want to get there, but ooh, I'm, I'm just not there yet. Kind of healthier for people to just, you know, recognize that rather than trying to, you know, tell ourselves that, okay, I, you know, I've gotten over it. I'm it's, it's past, it's over. I'm moving on when, you know, and when they really haven't actually engaged their will in the choice to forgive. We're talking with Father Thomas Berg about his book, Choosing Forgiveness, Unleash the Power of God's Grace, published by Our Sunday Visitor. Could it be said that 
we need to, even in just the first steps of moving towards forgiveness, is accepting that it happened, that something has happened. It could be something little, like somebody's taken my favorite pen off my desk, and I'm, I'm angry about that. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I want to, okay, I forget, I, I accept that it happened, now I, now I can begin to move on. That's something very small. But then the bigger things, a friend has betrayed me, or I feel like there's an injustice and I've lost my position at work, or the, you know, the much bigger things, or even the, the cruel things that come out of the mouths of those we love. Part of it is the process of, I need to accept that this has happened. Yeah, ab- absolutely. You, you said that so well. That's why the, the, first, the first step that we talk about in the process uh, we call it uncovering, and what, whether that's just part of one's daily kind of examination of conscience or just a daily exercise of forgiveness, or whether I'm looking back over a longer period of time, we first have to start by uncovering and then, as you said, acknowledging what needs to be forgiven. And again, I think as Catholics, it's very easy to kind of just cover that stuff up really, really fast. And it, it, I think a lot of times, you know, we can find ourselves, I know I do get to the end of the day and I'm just, I'm just irritable about, <laughs> about what exactly I'm not quite sure. And then if I do engage in, you know, my exam and, um, and I kind of look back and I try to, st- I start uncovering, well, what, what, what is that about? And oftentimes, right, we can trace that back to something that requires my forgiveness, you know, something that happened, a word that was said, a, a remark that somebody made, somebody that, you know, whatever, whatever the thing or things uh, were, we need to, yeah, to acknowledge them. And yeah, and with, especially with the much, with the deeper wounds in life, that's, that's very difficult, very, very, very difficult. And you think of the worst things that can happen. Sometimes for victims of of sexual abuse, it takes, and I I think especially of how could I not of in the context of clergy sexual abuse, it may take years for victims to kind of acknowledge that this happened to me, to put that name on it. And, you know, maybe it's even been buried because as a kind of a emotional self-protective mechanism and you know for that to come out and sort of but to say this happened to me that can kind of be crushing can be humiliating it can you know it's it's, so so yeah that's obviously the first step this happened and we recognize it then you mentioned the process because that's you outline it so uh, wonderfully step by step in choosing forgiveness unleash the power of god's grace and as someone who does have so many souls come to him, not only in confession, but I would assume in areas of spiritual accompaniment and spiritual direction. Oftentimes, the biggest barrier to our prayer life is that ability to be able to listen. I know for myself, I'm really good at talking at God, but sometimes Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to listen because he's trying to reveal to me something in my prayer if I'm just sitting there. And I don't want to hear it. Usually it's forgive somebody, an old wound, something's come Mm -hmm. up. As you said, that source of anger that we may exhibit towards somebody or something, you know, to our family, to our kids, to whatever, actually has its roots in a much deeper area, something that we just don't want to look at. And we absolutely do not want to forgive. Right. And we talk about this in the book, too. And, and of course, others others have um, as well the wonderful work that Neil Lozano has done, you know, the unbound approach to you know, spiritual healing and deliverance. And um, the, the point being that, that unforgiveness can be this deep block to spiritual progress, to grace, to, uh, to healing. This has been confirmed, you know, time and again, that a lot of times the, the key, and we actually have a chapter in the book on this, the, the key to a lot of unlocking a, a lot of healing in our lives often begins with forgiveness. Sometimes mysterious the way that that works and, and, and the way unforgiveness can be linked to all kinds of other stuff that's going on in my life and my relationships. And, 
And when some, a lot of times when persons receive that freedom to let go and to forgive, oh my gosh, all a whole bunch of other bells and whistles and lights kind of start going off in the spiritual life. And just, you're, you're we're in just a, such a better place, such a place of freedom. Uh, maybe it's not the, you know, the best image, but I think sometimes too, you know, forgive, unforgiveness is kind of like spiritual constipation. Mm-hmm. If I can, if I can say that. Oh yeah. It's you just, can say it, that. It's, it's, it's got us all, you know, kind of blocked up and this is, you know, the power, the grace that when, when we receive that, when, when we're in a place of unforgiveness, um, our freedom is, is bound, right? And to be happy, healthy, and holy, we need, we need to have the, the deepest interior freedom that we can. Um, unforgiveness is always kind of holding us bound um, in a certain way, and the Holy Spirit wants us to be free of those uh, bondages. Again, you outline in the book, Choosing Forgiveness, Unleash the Power of God's Grace. You make a decision to forgive. Okay, I want to forgive. I do want to do this, but you also have to proclaim it. And that doesn't mean you have to get up in the middle of the church and do it in front of everybody. <laughs> that's, that's not right. it that's at all. Right. That's right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I just that doesn't mean go out on the street corner and right. you know, proclaim. I, I, you know, I've, I've forgiven this man for having an affair with my wife. Right. <laughs> so, right. Right. It, so after step one, uncovering and spending some time looking at what I need to forgive and then getting to the place with God's grace of decision, deciding the, the next step that we talk about is we call, we call it proclaiming. And it's, I think that's an appropriate term because it's really proclaiming to myself and to God. One of the ways we suggest that we do this, I mean, that at the very least that there's an actual day time and place where this happens we certainly, especially for you know Catholics who have the the wonderful um, habit, maybe of um, Eucharist, Eucharistic adoration, to go to the adoration chapel, go before the Blessed Sacrament, bring your spiritual diary, your spiritual journal, um, open it up to a, a blank page, write down today's date, and then proclaim it, write it. I forgive, insert name, for. Everything, and we might begin that, you know, Lord Jesus, in your name, I forgive. And just kind of write, write that out. Even just looking at it on, on the human level, just psychologically, there's a tremendous value in that. Um, I can always go back then and look. I can see it in writing that on such and such a date, I forgave this person. I'm still struggling with that. Okay, but there was an act of my will. And that can then serve us later on to renew that to, since we wrote the book, I've, I've actually started, you know, doing this. Much. It's extreme, extraordinary, it can be extraordinarily helpful. And when touched by God's grace, uh, even more so um, to look back and say, okay, this happened and I'm in a different place now. I did forgive this person to proclaim it, to, to make it very clear that it actually happened. And that's, I think that's uh, probably the step in many ways that just kind of can get lost in the the rush to just kind of okay forgive and get over it. That's a very can be a very important piece, especially for for spiritual healing. This concludes part one of our conversation with Father Burke. With Father Thomas Burke, we've gone inside the pages of. Choosing Forgiveness, Unleash the Power of God's Grace. To learn more about this book or to obtain a copy, go to osv.com, the website for its publisher, Our Sunday Visitor, or you can find it at any fine Catholic bookstore. To hear and or to download this conversation along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com or you can find it within the free Discerning Hearts app as well as on numerous streaming platforms. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission, which is to provide authentic and rock-solid spiritual formation freely to souls around the world. And if you feel us worthy, please consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible, to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for Inside the Pages, insights from today's most compelling authors.